This is how you punish a narcissist. The narcissist already knows they're not being real or authentic. They know they're just a fictional character, an imaginary person. They lack any qualities that make them different, but in their minds they think they're special or unique, when in reality they're just the same as any other narcissist of any gender or age or from any part of the world because they all act and behave exactly the same so they're no different from any other narcissist they created this false character which they believe to be special and different but they do know that their false character isn't real they know they're not really about what they say they're about they know they're not who they say they are which is why they have to target someone who is real they hunt to target you because they know that you're actually about something They know that you're capable. They know that you actually have all of the qualities and abilities that they claim to have. And you're not even pretending. You don't have to broadcast it or put on a show. Because that's just naturally who you are. You're the real deal. You're genuine. You're everything they wish they were everything that they initially portrayed themselves to be so naturally they're very envious of you and they may even try to compete with you or outdo you because although they may seem cold and distant at times they do have emotions they can feel envious jealous insecure embarrassed and frustrated If you put them on the spot and you hold them up to something they've claimed to be, they don't know how to respond. They don't know how to deal with it. Because it may be the first time in their lives that they've ever been confronted. No one may have ever doubted them before. So naturally they will be shocked and embarrassed because their entire image and reputation depends on other people's perceptions and beliefs. If you don't believe in what they're displaying to you, the entire thing falls apart like a house of cards. It collapses on top of them and then they're left laying in the rubble scratch of their heads, not knowing what to do because their manipulation depends on whether or not their target is susceptible to it. It's powered by your belief. If you take away your belief they haven't got a leg to stand on. Because it's not even real. It exists only in the target's imagination. It's a shared fantasy. Which is why if you put them on the spot. And you hold them up to it. They wouldn't even know what to do. They wouldn't know how to even represent what they're portraying themselves to be. Because what you've seen is all that there is. They've depended on their manipulation their entire lives. They've never actually developed the qualities or skills that are associated with the character that they've created. Some of them are grandiose. They love to put on a show. They're exhibitionists. They behave in an extravagant way in order to attract attention because the attention is their cue. It serves as a signal to them as the actor or performer to begin their performance. To stage or present their play or form of entertainment which is meant to provide the audience with amusement or enjoyment. Or if that doesn't work it's meant to intimidate you and to get you to submit to their will. 
but that's as far as it goes. It's been a belation and deception. And sometimes it's future faking as well. They're not actually going to go and follow it up with action. Many of them don't even have the means. They will often brag and boast about their achievements, possessions or abilities. They will talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction. They will exaggerate and overstate as though they're the best thing since sliced bread. But if you press them and you give them the opportunity to perform, they would probably refuse or make up some excuse for why they can't do it. Or in the rare case where they might actually be willing to go ahead with it, you would be laughing at them. You would find amusement in a way that was not intended. Which is why in most situations, they're not going to let it go that far. They're not going to let you see them sweat. Because they already know that if they did that, you would have the last laugh. You would wonder what you ever saw in them. Because everything that they portrayed themselves to be is very different to who they actually are. They're nothing like what they led you to believe and they know it. Which is why they rely so heavily on their manipulation. It's all about making you think that they have something. Because they're very embarrassed about it. So they try to hide it. They will give you the illusion of the false character. And they will only spend a short amount of time around you. They won't get too deeply involved. They will keep you at arm's length. Because they don't want you to expose them. They don't want you to know that they're fake. Because as long as you're none the wiser. It gives them the upper hand. They can continue to manipulate and control you. Which in turn makes them feel alive. Because it extracts your energy and attention from you. Which is why they always have to be two steps ahead of you. To prevent you from catching on or from seeing underneath the veil. Because if you see that their cover is blown. It's all over for them after that. Because it would render their manipulation ineffective. It's like if you watched an action or horror movie. And every scene began a few seconds before it was supposed to begin. And you could see the cast of the director. It wouldn't seem as believable or as real. It wouldn't have such a powerful effect on you. Which is why they have to isolate you. They have to cause you to remain alone or apart from other people. So that they can be your only source of influence. Because if there was anyone else involved who was not following their script. It would instantly reveal to you that it is all an act. And yet people wonder why they're so shady, suspicious and questionable. It's because they already know that they're not about anything. They're not who they say they are. So they have to manage people's perceptions and expectations. To prevent their cover from being blown. But when you do catch on to it, it resurfaces their shame. They begin to feel humiliation and distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. But this is only for a very short period of time. It's a small window of self-reflection. Because any longer than that and they would go insane. They would lose their minds because they can't stand to see themselves. They run away from that. Which is why they create the false character to begin with. Because they believe that who they actually are wasn't good enough. They already know that they're missing something that they should have. They know that they can't be vulnerable. And it eats away at them. Because while you can just be yourself. They have to protect and defend their false character at all costs. And they're very afraid of exposure. So it's all about getting you before you get them. Of course they know that you desire something more. They've experienced it before. Where their past sources of supply were not satisfied with what they had. 
So they already know it's just a matter of time until you get fed up of dealing with them. And there's really nothing they can do to prevent that. But then they don't really care about what you want. All they care about is how it makes them feel. And it makes them feel like they're not good enough. Because they can't give you what you want. So then they will try to shame you. Or if they're more covert, they may just play the victim. But they will never actually put in the work to be something. Because they wouldn't know where to start. They're so used to just manipulating people. Instead of actually living up to who they portray themselves to be. And in some situations. They may never have thought that you would have questioned them. While other narcissists may even enjoy being fake and manipulating people. Because that may well be the only way that they can find fulfillment. And if you're not down with the program. They're not going to be too concerned about it. Because they may have a lot of other supplies who actually aren't even that bothered. They may not even care that the narcissist is fake. That may be a part of the fun for them. They may prefer the fantasy. Because some of their supplies are fake too. Narcissists prefer to surround themselves with other fake people. And then they tend to team up against their scapegoated target. Who is typically the only real person there. But either way it is self-destructive. Because they're denying themselves of something real and authentic. Which is also something that they can't achieve or obtain. Because they wouldn't know where to start. All they really know how to do is be fake. So they're forced to settle for less. And it often ends up with just being two fake people together instead of anything real. Which is why they will often try to triangulate you with their other sources of supply. Because again that's the only way that they can find fulfillment. There is no genuine fulfillment in something fake. You just have to make it up in your mind. And when they're around you. That's exactly what they will expect you to do. Because that's what has always worked for them in the past. To where it just becomes an imaginative play or make believe. Until you finally emerge from under their spell. And they're left with no other choice but to devalue you. And then it's also the reason why they discard you. And why they won't even hoover you. Because they know that you know. And it's embarrassing for them. So they'd rather just leave you with this image in your head of them being something real. This fantasy. This dream. Rather than anything that is actually grounded in reality. Because then it makes it more believable for them. And then they can continue to exist in this fantasy world inside their heads. Because they know there's going to be another sucker just around the corner. Another fool who will believe anything they say. So they look at it like who needs you. Who cares if you are real. Who cares about love and intimacy. Or a connection. When they can manipulate people and still get their needs met. It's a sad and lonely existence. But it's just how it has to be for them. And they will never find satisfaction in anything they do. But they can't have it any other way. Because any time that they're around you they're forced to self-reflect. And they don't want no parts of themselves. They don't want to see that. Which is why by the end of it they were always fighting with you. And they tried to get you to fight with them. Because they knew that you could see right through them. And then when you were calling them mean or cruel. You may have thought that you were exposing them. But they were actually enjoying that as well.
Because in many situations, you may be the only one who sees them that way. Even though other people may know that they're a narcissist, those other people are likely narcissists as well. So they don't see anything wrong with that. As long as they have power over you. Because all they really care about is avoiding self-reflection. Which is why the only thing that punishes them is when they're left on their own to self-reflect. To think about their actions. Because that's what they're running from. And it's why they go from one relationship to the next. So the only way to punish them. Is to distance yourself from them. Because you may well be the only real person they've ever met in their lives. And it's no fun for them to project or deflect. Onto someone who they already know to be fake. That's not going to do anything for them. It's like calling a cat a cat. Everyone already knows what it is. So what difference does it make? It's more fun for them when they can perceive something as something else. As whatever they want it to be. As whatever will make them feel better about themselves. Which is why they typically team up and work together with other narcissistic people. To target someone who is real. Someone who will actually care because that has a powerful effect. It's the act of transitioning you into something else. That's where their supply comes from. Which is why if you go no contact and you cut them out of your life. It will completely destroy them. And it's really the only way that you can punish them. Because even if they go on to another relationship, it's not going to be the same. They're not going to be able to do what they were doing with you. Because empaths are very rare. So the odds of them having that again are very slim. Which is why even if they're in another relationship, they're still going to be left to self-reflect. Because the other person is likely to be fake and narcissistic as well. Which is why even when it seems like they've moved on and they've found someone else, they still come back with a hoover. Or they try to start a smear campaign against you. Because you actually care. And in today's world that is actually very rare. Most people are not concerned about other people's feelings or opinions. It doesn't even cross their minds at the way that it does with you. They're too wrapped up in themselves. So the narcissist is unlikely to find another person who actually listens to them and cares about them. Because like attracts like. So they were never meant to be involved with you to begin with. They manipulated you. They led you to believe that they were the same as you. But they're not the same as you. They're nothing like you. Which is why if you cut them off they will be forced to face their own self-reflection. And they will be very bitter. Because they already know that they're not going to find someone else like you. What they have is extremely common. But what you have is extremely rare. You're highly sensitive. You're able to be vulnerable. But at the same time you're built to last. They're not built to last. And if you look at them they're already falling apart. They can't survive emotionally without you. Which is why the best thing you can do is cut ties. Stop playing the game. Stop trying to change their mind. By realizing that like attracts like. Because when you give love you will receive love. People attract people who are similar to them.
cut them off. Just imagine who you could end up with in the future. And just imagine who they will end up with. And let that motivate you to leave them be. Leave them where you found them. In their present of their own making. Because that will punish them more than anything else. While you move on and you live a good life. And you attract someone who is just like you. Someone who loves the way that you love. Someone who cares about you. Just as much as you once cared about the narcissist. Because when you find someone like that. You will realize why it never worked out with them. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.